Fine-tuning massive language models like OpenAI's new GPT OSS has always felt out of reach, demanding powerful, expensive hardware. But what if I told you that you can fine-tune this 20 billion parameter model for free on a single consumer GPU and that we can solve the most common, frustrating errors that stop most people in their tracks? In this video, we're going to do exactly that. We'll go from a failing, broken training run to a fully fine-tuned, multilingual reasoning model. And I'll show you every single step and what is our goal exactly. We are going to fine-tuning GPT OSS 20B model to reason effectively in multiple languages. We'll use the power of Unsloth for incredibly fast training and a specialized data set where chain of thought reasoning has been translated into languages like French, Spanish, German, and Italian. The end result is a model that can think step by step in one language and then give you the final answer in another. For example, we can ask it a math problem in English, tell it to reason in French, and it will perform the step by step calculation in French before giving the final clean answer in English. This is a powerful technique that helps developers improve the interpretability of reasoning models, especially when working with languages that aren't as well represented online. All right, let's dive into the code. The first step, as always, is setting up our environment. This single pip install command from the Unsloth notebook handles everything. It installs PyTorch, Transformers, and all of Unsloth's custom kernels, which are the secret sauce that makes this so fast and memory efficient. We just run this cell and we're ready to go. Now for the magic. To load the model, we use fast language model from Unsloth. This is a drop in replacement for the standard hugging face from pre-trained function, but with a ton of optimizations under the hood. We specify the model name and most importantly, we set load in 4-bit to true. This technique called quantization shrinks the model's memory footprint dramatically, which is what makes it possible to fit a 20 billion parameter model onto a free T4 GPU. As this runs, Unsloth is patching the model's code in the background to enable that two times faster training. You can see it downloading the model weights. And once it's done, we'll have the entire 20B model loaded into memory, ready for the next step. We aren't going to train the entire 20 billion parameters. That would be incredibly slow and still wouldn't fit in memory. Instead, we use a technique called a low rank adaptation. The idea is simple. We freeze the massive base model and only train a tiny set of new, small layers called adapters. This is incredibly efficient. Unsloth makes this super easy. We call fast language model, get peft model, and pass in our configuration. We're setting our, the rank of our adapter to 16 and targeting the attention layers of the model, which is standard practice. Now, you might be wondering where these numbers like R equals 16 come from. If you're ever unsure, the Unsloth documentation has this fantastic hyperparameters guide. It explains what each parameter does and gives great recommendations. Before we get to the data, there's a unique feature of the GPT OSS models we need to cover. Reasoning effort. You can set this to low, medium, or high to control the trade-off between response speed and the complexity of the reasoning. For our fine-tuning, we'll be using a dataset designed to teach this reasoning process. We're using the Hugging Face H4 multilingual thinking dataset. What's special about it is that it uses OpenAI's Harmony format. Instead of a single response, the model's output is split into two channels, an analysis channel, where the model performs its step-by-step -step chain of thought reasoning, and a final channel, which contains the polished, 
final answer for the user. This separation is the key that allows our model to reason in one language and respond in another. So we have our optimized model, our low eye adapters configured, and our dataset formatted. Everything seems perfect. We're ready to train. Let's run the trainer. And there it is. Right around step 50, the training loss becomes NAN. This is a classic gradient explosion, and it means our training has completely failed. No matter what I tried initially, lowering the learning rate, tweaking other hyperparameters, it kept happening. This is a common and incredibly frustrating problem. So let's debug it together. So what's going on? When you get exploding gradients, the first suspect is often the data itself. There might be some bad examples or outliers that are destabilizing the training process. Let's investigate. The first step is to actually look at the distribution of our data. I've written a small helper function here to check the token lengths of all the examples in our data set. Okay? So we have 1,000 examples. The average length is about 1,150 tokens, which seems reasonable. But look at this. The maximum length is almost 33,000 tokens. That's a massive outlier. The vast majority of our data is under 4,000 tokens. So these huge examples could definitely be causing problems. Let's use the interquartile range or IQR method to mathematically define what an outlier is and separate them out with an IQR upper bound of about 2,600 tokens. We've found that nine of our 1,000 samples are outliers. Now let's print them out and see what's inside. And wow, look at this. Outlier 4 has a developer instruction that just says, you are a cat. Only respond with meows and purrs, and the user asks, can you tell me the story of Jesus Christ? The model's analysis is just a long string of Mao and purr. This is junk data. It's extremely long and doesn't provide any useful signal for learning. By cleaning these nine examples out, we're already making our data set much more stable. After cleaning our data, the next step is to choose the right max star sequence out length for training. Now, if we look back at our token distribution chart, we can see that 95.3% of our examples are shorter than 2048 tokens. So naturally, that seems like the perfect setting to capture almost all of our data, right? Well, I tried that and I immediately hit an out of memory error. The free T4 GPU on Colab, as powerful as it is for a free resource, just couldn't handle that sequence length during training, even with Unsloth's great optimizations. This forces us to make a compromise. We have to reduce the max the sec length down uh, to 1024 to stay within our VRAM budget. But this creates a new, serious problem. If we just naively truncate our data at 1,024 tokens, we risk breaking the very structure we're trying to teach the model. Look, when we truncate this example, the entire answer gets cut off. The part of the text that actually contains the recipe and the solution to the user's prompt is completely discarded. Training on this broken example would teach the model to generate incomplete thoughts and can lead directly to the NAN loss we saw earlier. The solution isn't truncation, it's chunking. We need to split our long examples into multiple, smaller, valid chunks of 1024 tokens. Crucially, each chunk must preserve the original instruction and conversation structure. This way, we turn one very long sample into multiple valid shorter training samples without losing any information. After applying this chunking logic, our dataset of 991 clean examples becomes a dataset of 1,628 valid training chunks.
Now we're ready to train. I'm setting the batch size to one with four steps of gradient accumulation. The learning rate is set to a safer five, E minus five. We'll train for one full epoch. And here we go. As you can see, the training is progressing smoothly. The loss is going down step by step, and most importantly, no NAN values in sight. This is exactly what we want to see. The data preparation we did was the key to making this work. And done. The training finished without any issues. We've successfully fine-tuned a 20 billion parameter model on a free Google Colab GPU. Now that we have our trained model, the next step is to save our low R adapters and push them to the Hugging Face Hub. This makes it super easy to share and reload for inference later. Let's test its multilingual reasoning. Here's the problem in English, asking for French reasoning, and it works perfectly. Now for Spanish. Perfect again. The model has clearly learned the task, but here's the ultimate test. The training data did not include Japanese. What happens if we ask it to reason in a language it's never seen? Look at this. It's incredible. It attempts the entire reasoning process in Japanese. It understands the prompt, breaks down the calculation steps, and performs the math correctly. And the final answer is also delivered perfectly in Japanese. This is a complete end-to-end -end success in a language it learned through zero-shot generalization. This is exactly why this technique is so powerful. It means a Japanese speaker can follow the model's thought process in their native language, making the AI's reasoning transparent and interpretable. They don't need to default to English. So let's recap. We've successfully fine-tuned OpenAI's GPT OSS 20B model. The key takeaways are data hygiene is everything. Cleaning outliers is critical to prevent training failure. Resource-aware training is essential. Use intelligent chunking instead of simple truncation to preserve data quality and avoid errors. The tools are here. With Unsloth and a free Google Colab notebook, you now have the power to customize state-of-the-art models without a massive budget. The barrier to entry has truly been lowered. I'm incredibly excited to see what you all build with this. Thanks for watching.